It's finally here, mate. The day that we wait for every single year. I think thinning out of the carnival aside, this is still a cracking card at Flemington for Derby Day. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, also, from now on, um, you can call me Carl Declan Jones Stefanovic from the Today Show because I break news. You do. You're going up with that. Well, you should, as a news hound, you know, you'd never bury the lead. <laughs> so you, you knew that Militarize had broken his penis about three months ago. <laughs> he hadn't broken his penis. He'd broken his, <laughs> he'd broken his nats <laughs> because the, uh, look, he was shooting, but there wasn't much substance in the shot. As I think, was it the straight? Uh, mil- militarize out of ammo. Yes. The great headline. Phenomenal ammo. A I think phenomenal you- headline. <laughs> Not so phenomenal ammo. Well, to be fair, you broke this news so long ago. They had months to prepare it. They really did. So- um, <laughs> I, I think I think that podcast was literally like five weeks ago, ages ago. It was so long. I ago. I literally had to keep scrolling yeah. to find the video. I was like, oh my god, where is this thing? Yeah. So breaking news. It's not so breaking, but. Mm. With all due respect to the straight, they're doing some phenomenal work. Mm. Um, free news that's not biased when it comes to horse racing. So I love your work, the straight. Um, yeah, we're just you know we're just a couple of jokes <laughs> taking the piss, and, and you should not listening listen to anything we say. <laughs> we do not take anything seriously. <laughs> Zero. Therefore, you shouldn't take us seriously. Zero authority. Um, can I just say this mm. is probably the first time in a long time both of us are wearing the the punting cap on the pod because I always forget, and you always pay respect to mm. the occasion mm. and I'm not very respectful but I thought Derby Day like I should I reckon the last time we wore it was Stradbroke Day not this year last year yeah so that's my bad and I also wore a black tee for those listening and not watching on YouTube because what's the theme on Derby Day guys yeah black and white I f- didn't put two and two together I'm wearing white pants though or white shorts so you know between us we've kind of figured it out Mate, between us, we've tipped the card. So, like, what do you, what do you mean we figured it out? Of course we have. We've cracked the code. It's <laughs> we've cracked the code. Have you? We're recording on a Wednesday. Yeah, mate. Just a little midweek. Let's build some bank for Derby Day. Bendigo. What a piece of piss. What was that thing's name? Sea King. Oh my God. How do how did that start sixth one? It mate, left, demolished the left all the Goldeens back in the field. <laughs> sea, sea King just absolutely destroyed them. They're all the slow pokes back <laughs> in the field. <laughs> Who was running on to second, Barclay Square, and he brained him by four lengths, and he went at the 600. He did, yeah. I was like, oh, by Declan Bates. Yeah, I was like, oh, this this thing must have a serious <laughs> Yeah, like, Declan's serious. like, my thing's traveling. I'm just yeah. going to put this race to bed. Mm. Uh, so, no, nah, yeah, well found by me. And me. And you. Mm. And a couple of others. So yeah. Just to build some bank for Derby Day. Jeez, we're in the mood. Oh, we're in a serious, serious vein of form, and to be fair, it's been due. So, it's good to do it near grand final days, though. And grand final days, in my opinion, get none bigger than Derby Day. But there's a little game I want to play with you. Now, we put it out on our Instagram stories. If you don't follow us on the Drift Podcast, you better you better because there's multiple reasons, right? We put out uh, hard-hitting breaking news on there, for mm. starters. But sec- for second, we do little things like this. Now, this is the first time we've ever done this in the nine seasons, nine, nine of them, that we've been doing this, where we've put it out to our audience. What would you name a fierce impact, shout the bar, Philly or Colt? You can choose the gender. <laughs> We're not precious. So, we have some cracking uh, responses from the drifters, but I'm going to kick things off. Mm-hmm. Hangover. Yeah. Classic. Morning after, head noise. Head noise, good. Yeah. Groggy. Yeah. Uh, and I also, <laughs> this was uh, my fun one, Buzz Frothfield. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Now, Declan. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen here, Braith. What you need to understand is that Nico is easily the best player on the Cronulla Sharks. <laughs> no, no, Gordy, you listen to me. <laughs> New South Wales. I just got to ask a question. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if Freddie really understands what Origins all about. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, he's a walk. He's a walking joke. Like he's a walking, talking joke. Everything he says is funny. It's just like Bob Catter. Like mm. <clears throat> let every <laughs> let a thousand <laughs> blossoms bloom. 
you know, but I ain't spending any time on it because in the meantime, every three months, a person is torn to pieces by a crocodile in North Queensland. Uh, now, I don't I don't necessarily think that Buzz would shout the bar, <laughs> no, but, he, no. but he would drink everything behind it. <laughs> he really would. <laughs> He would drink it dry, yeah, Buzz. I think he likes a punt too. And he's a bit of a fierce journalist, you know what I mean? He so sure is. That's, where, that's how I pieced it together. But do you have any? I do. Uh, whether you could name a horse this or not, this is the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> Free piss. <laughs> Free piss, Christmas party, mm. work drinks, uh, bar tab, mm. all that sort of stuff. I was thinking actually lemon and salt. For like yeah, a, tequila slammers. Yeah, I thought that would not cock, be. cock sucking cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> Jager bomb, wet pussy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right, uh, <laughs> don't give us a little free license, drifters. Don't uh, give us a free license. All right. Oh, that was funny. I was literally crying. A thousand beers. All right. We're going to put your names to these, so they better be good. I've re- read through about half of them. So, Josh Bell, the Singo effect. Makes sense, right? Yeah, shout the bar. Josh, John Singleton. Yep. All right, Chuka, you've written a dossier here, so let me read this out. Scream crusher. Hear me out. A fierce shout is a scream and an impact bar is part of a rock crusher. It also ties into the pedigree a bit further down the line. Oh, shit. Fierce Impact's second dam was Anna Anna Sturz. Her fourth grandsire was the stallion named Hyperion, 1930. Hyperion just happens to be the fourth grandsire of a fairly well-known Kiwi runner named Bone Crusher. Based on all that logic, you've successfully just bought your Cox Plate horse. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay, Chuka, did I? Did we ask for an essay? <laughs> I, I don't think that was part of the. I post. like. I liked the effort. Yeah, okay. I appreciated it. Okay, my mate, fourth grandsire. That's some serious work he's done. He's More done research some, than me. He's done some research on bloodlines. Craig I can respect that. Craig Sneesby would know a thing or two about naming a horse. Mm-hmm. Pub fight. Yeah, it's good pub fight. Uh, Tuck Bell impact the bar. Josh Buttonshaw, Impact the Bar again, uh, or Josh's son. Uh, <laughs> Just straight up. Kurt Raymond, Shouting Impact. Jake Milne, Out Cold. I like that. I like that too, yeah. Brandon Francis, Two Day Hangover. Uh, Brad Tyson, Broke. <laughs> <laughs> well named. Jay Meany, Singo Son. Uh, Josh Bunny, Late Night Impact. As Burden. Fierce Hangover, Melbourne Sean, Impact the Bar again, uh, Lewis White, Angry Barman. Don't mind that one. Yeah, I like that. It's almost like who shot the barman. Tim Smith, Impact the Bar again. Impact the Bar. And James Lunny, Fireball. I like Fireball too. Yeah. Now, some good ones in there, Drifters. I reckon maybe we need to keep it going. Yeah, well, I think we might do it for each. So, the reason why I picked Fierce Impact and Shout the Bar... Fierce Impact won the Cantala when it was on Derby Day and then Shout the Shout the Bar won the Empire Rose. Mm-hmm. And they just so happened to wear the same silks. So uh, we're not really going to delve into their pedigree if they're related. Th- there might be some incest. Hey, <laughs> unfortunately, there is inbreeding in horse breeding. That, that happens. But look, it's there's got to be some, some sort of gap bet- between uh, sires, that's for sure. Mm. Now... I'm not going to spend any any time on it, but let's get into this card. <laughs> I ain't spending any more time. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, Flemington, race one, tra- a rail in the true. Now, there is a northerly wind up to 25 kilometers per hour, which could be a head breeze in the straight, I believe. So, it could be beneficial to get some cover. So, if you're thinking of last year, it's basically the opposite. So, you'd want to get a little bit of cover during the run, but it's only really effective if it's 20 k's an hour or more so you know if it's less than that who cares and we're recording on a wednesday the forecast could get even worse so check your local guides now speed in this race i could see feroce ha- uh, hammett and actor non verba going forward but i think that a lot of these are looking for a position behind i don't think there's a stack of speed in this race it doesn't look to be a lot of speed at all and i think you just got to look at the depth of the race too like, uh, how many of these horses have the ability to come second in a Caulfield Guineas? Uh, depends, but I think 
I think two dollars thirty for Feroce, who started sixty to one in a poor edition of the Caulfield Guineas. Are you really batting up for that? No, I'm not. I'm not batting up at the price, but you got to you got to start there, though. Of course, you you got to start there, and then you're like, okay, cool. How can I get it beat? Mm. Well, you're looking at the next in the market, Aliana. Mm. I thought she was a little smarty. Um, picked by the source, I believe. Yeah, no, at enormous odds. At enormous odds, but then you, you find her three dollars fifty here. It does get J Mac? Mm. Chris Waller in the Carbine Club Stakes has a phenomenal record. I remember uh, a little filly called Fangirl, mm. and another one called. Uh, no, actually, Espion didn't run in this race. But no. anyway, um, uh, you're thinking of when we were down there last. He brought down Pungo, and he was three to one, and he ran fifth. That's right. I am thinking about that. But Chris Waller targets this race every single year. He does. So they're the, they're the two obvious starting points. And I'm just I'm looking at the rest of the field and maybe I'll, maybe I'll need to lean on a bit of your expertise to see if there's an alternative form line at a decent price. Uh, I've, it's decent enough. 850 is decent enough. That is decent enough. Stylish secret, mate. Won the Derby preview. Uh, Kev Fresh for this. And this horse, if he had a license, it would say certified line chaser because that's <laughs> all he does. He absolutely smokes the line. And so his form is around the likes of Evaporate. And he obviously beat all those horses who are uh, going towards the derby. I think the riding's on the wall with him where the stable just go like, oh, I just don't think this thing's going to stay. Freshen him up, target him towards the 1600 in the car, uh, Carbine Club. I think it's a sensational bet to kick off your day. Yeah, and Kings of Wall, King of Wall Street has uh, obviously franked the form. Uh, and you've also seen, yeah, evaporate running a cox plate like a dead last in a cox plate. But he, what are, what are these doing in a cox plate? Oh, doing much much the same. Exactly. Like especially with the run that he he had, he was three wide. Is it World War Three? <laughs> <laughs> Is it World War Three? Um, so if, if you can't hear that, that's just a helicopter, helicopter, uh, chopper. Just, yeah, chopper going over. But anyway, it's gone now. I think Stylish Secret will run super. From barrier six, he'll probably they'll be looking for a position. I don't want him to get too far back, mm-hmm. but I think Aliana. People will because Aliana was back to the inside, and Canara was the other one, uh, the stable mate in the same seals coming out wide. Now I think people will naturally, in my opinion, be going towards Canara because she had a tougher run, but she also had a three kilo. Um, weight swing on Eliana that day. She carried three kilos less. There's a two kilo weight swing in this. Mm. So I think um, that will kind of even things out. I think Eliana will probably be last in the running, I'd say. So heart in your mouth sort of stuff, but I'm going to have Quinellas around Eliana and Stylish Secret. Yep. <clears throat> no, nice enough. Nice enough to bet into it at $8.50, I think. Yeah. So no firm opinions from you. Nah, no firm opinions at this okay. stage. All right, race two, the vanity. Holy smokes. So this is the new addition to Derby Day. It is $8 the field here. Group three for the three-year-old fillies, set weights and penalties. Just the 16 runners with one emergency. There is so many form lines here, I don't even know where to start. I'll start with a speed map, and I think there's going to be plenty of it. Too darn Lizzie to go forward from Iron Velvet, I reckon. Dominator could go up there uh, along with the stable mate, stable mate to Don Lizzie. Bennett Gill will probably go forward with extremely hardies from the low draw. And then I could even see Stage and Screen go up there too. <sighs> I think it's going to be a truly run 1,400 metres. Your natural... I know how you operate. You want to get a result with GGs. But how do you feel about Barrier 16? Yeah, you know me well. Um, would love to get a result for her, but terrible gait. I know where she's going to be, and oh, just I feel I feel like the last couple she's been in a position to mm. um, to probably put them away, and she just found a couple better. So I don't want to go back to the well again with her. If she wins at fourteens, will I be devastated? Absolutely, but I think I can find the winner in this race. Um, at a big price anyway. Um, I backed Chewing Gum at Sandown. Mm. She finished midfield there. Uh, and she came out at a big price in the Thoroughbred Club of Australia plate <laughs> uh, and was ridden really quietly and 
absolutely came home like a freight train to just miss Kurianagi at a big price there. You're getting $13 here. Mm -hmm. She draws to sit closer, and to your point, I think there's going to be a stack of speed on. If Flemington's if Flemington's got a travel later again, then you know, I don't could think be, it will. It could be a risky bet, but I think it'll play fairer this time. She looks to me like a like a filly who wants a bit more, a bit more space. Um, sit just behind them, and then she go bang chewing gum. She's at thirteens, which is a price I'm I'm happy to take. But there's a stack of others at, at a similar price that you could back. I I was looking at uh, the all in markets, and she was about thirty to one. And uh, in the previous, uh, Eliana was about 15s. Yeah, wow. And she's into 350. So, but also, I couldn't bet because Eliana was nommed in three different races. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Thanks, thanks Uncle Chris. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, chewing gum was also one of those that I put a little circle around. I thought good sort coming out of that Eliana form line uh, was extremely unlucky from barrier 13. Uh, drops a couple of kilos from that run. Barry 10, J-Mac on for Chris Waller. You know, I wouldn't be shocked if he had a double by race two. That's what J-Mac does on Derby Day. Yeah. Um, Matisse is one of mine. Barry 6, Blake Shin on. She could improve with the blinkers on and getting to Flemington. Absolutely. But the one I landed on, dog shit gate, <laughs> is uh, Kieran Nagy. Now, 13 to 1, Jamie Carr. I have found Jamie Carr a lot which I hate it when I keep going back to the same jockey. I'm like, well, I'm either a genius or it's just not going to happen. Yeah, this, jo <laughs> this jockey's either, ha either, either having the greatest day of all time yeah. or I'm um, completely missing. I thought she was really, really solid against like that pattern of the day on uh, Caulfield Cup Day, if it was that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever day that was. So I thought she was super. And Jamie Carr heard her on radio during the week saying that this horse has improved about 10 lengths when she rode her uh, into fourth in the Quisette and just from riding her in track work. So I think she's a happy, happy little filly and she's shown some talent in her two-year-old season and I think it might have finally clicked for her. So I think she'll run super. Um, now back to chewing gum. It'd be nice to see these silks get a win uh, on Saturday due to the passing of... Uh, Colin McKenna. Colin McKenna. Yes, absolutely. Um, absolutely. And look, the the Hayes boys, you know, we made this point in the last few weeks, they're absolutely on fire. So, um, yeah, but I, I agree. I th because I like chewing gum, I also like Kuri and Argy was the gate that swayed me. And mm -hmm. I think just the setup of the race, the speed map, I think she'll get one last crack at it. Mm. All right, race three is the rising, rising fast, group three handicap. This is a cracking little contest, I, th I thought. Uh, not much speed in it again. I thought Jungle Jim will likely go forward with Who Dares and maybe Marble 9 from out wide. Uh, did you see things pretty similar? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Now, fascinating runner here. He was dual nominated Schwartz uh, for this. And I think he was also in the winner's stakes, I believe, yep. in, um, in Sydney or another race. Uh, comes to Melbourne. He's raced at... Flemington once before, I believe it might have been Champions Day, and he absolutely brained him. So, are you on Team Schwartz here, or you want to go something else? Um, I am leaning towards Schwartz. I gave Spacewalk a big chance in this race, mate. I so he lost on Caulfield Cup Day last year, mm -hmm. then bounced out of that and won this race, which I actually think it might have been on Champions Day last year, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, no, it was Derby Day. Forget what I'm, forget what I'm talking about. Anyway, so very similar, very similar runs, and he was carrying a stack of weight that day. He actually drops three and a half kilos to Ray, um, in a weight swing. There, I think he he's racing super, and Jamie's on again. Barry fourteen, he can just come down the outside, and I think he does his best racing down the straight space walk. I think so. Um. The, the only thing that made me lean more towards Camp Schwartz was uh, we, we know Spacewalk and, and his best is exposed. His best is still good enough to win this, but I think Schwartz is a horse who has a little bit more under the hood. Uh, interesting starting point for him here. He hasn't raced since August, so coming off a spell, I'm thinking maybe, okay, we start him off here at the 1,200 metres. Um, maybe there's a race for him by the end of the spring, maybe 
a Rupert Clark or maybe something over in WA maybe? Rupert Clark is Rupert the Clark? target. Okay. So is he going to be wound up fully? No, but I, I don't think he'll take much more improvement out of this um, if because the Rupert Clark's not too far away at all. So. Yeah. Uh, plus, I love gate 10 with J-Mac. That's just tick, tick for me. Yeah. Yeah. If he can find a bit of cover, I think he'll be awfully hard to piece. So, Schwartz and, and Spacewalk are the ones. If you were looking for another one, Mahaba is that horse. Uh, barrier 2, if the rail is on down the straight, which stranger things have happened. <laughs> yeah. uh, he was at a huge price first up. He drifted out to $51 from 20s. Um, but he ran on super. Oscar was into second that day, Oscar's fortune. So... How is the form? We'll kind of we'll know by then. Uh, but Bellatrix Star was the horse that went on to run that race. He was at 58 and a half kilos there. He gets 57 here. And we've seen him at the Valley knock off Brave Mead second up before. So yep. I think he'll run super. Now, the Damien Oliver. 1,400 meters, group two, handicap. You have, is it just as simple as another Will versus Jimmy? Will versus Jimmy. And uh 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 Um... <clears throat> Cheese another wheel is awfully short for a, a horse that's coming off a, a seventh in the two rack. Uh, I'm looking at this race and I'm I'm seeing absolutely no speed, mm. absolutely none. And we saw another wheel lead in the two rack last time and that busted him up. So mm. th- he's looking for cover, mm-hmm. but who's who's he going to get it from? I'm not 100 percent sure. Jimmy Starr, we know where he's going to be. He's going to be all the way back. I think a track like Caulfield suits him more because if you watch his wins at Caulfield, he almost slingshots uh, around the bend, and that really suits his running style. I think a long Flemington straight will give him time to wind up, but I know where he's going to be. He's going to be last. I thought the win of Mighty Ulysses was really smart um, on Caulfield Cup Day. He's a horse who uh, had his first preparation in Australia last time. Um, and put him to the sword over a mile in a listed race in Brisbane. They sort of came off the boil in the Hollandale, and then he ran into Stradbroke, which was not the right race for him at all, coming back from 1,800 metres. Really liked how he went in the Munga stakes last start uh, at a big price. I gave him some thought, but but just you know completely put a line through him, probably based on price more than anything else, which was silly. I learned my lesson. He's $7 here. He's got to carry the, the top weight, but I think he's going to lead, and I, I think Jamie Mott, with him, we'll take some of improvement out of last start and mm. could just hold him off. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I think seven bucks. I'd rather take that about him than the two dollars seventy with another will, um, and the short price for Jimmy Star. I think Jimmy Star is the biggest threat, but I just don't think the race sets, set, mm. sets up that well for him at all. Okay, I was team another will here, and he was that their prices were basically flipped in all in markets. So he was about three fifty and. Uh, Jimmy Star was about uh, 270 So they've kind of flipped with another wheel being $2.70 favorite with Neds at the moment. Uh, he's raced at the track once before and he brained him by four and a half lengths. He's been doing his work at Caulfield and I don't think that is his track at all. I think this horse needs plenty of room to wind up. He has been proven to be versatile where he does go forward, but I think he's so much better when he's ridden with cover and put to sleep a bit. I would love to see Jamie do that. And Jamie's not the most aggressive rider anyway. So I think she'll, from barrier two, just try and hold that position. If if she's three pairs back with um, some other horses going forward, I think think it will be... I think this is the one that... Uh, is going to win for the Silks this weekend. I have a feeling uh, for another wheel and Colin McKenna. So I thought the speed in this race could have been the likes of the astrologist astrologist going forward, not an option even. Tamer Lame is probably the most uh, the logical one, but he's first up and he's I don't think he's ever won first up. Um, or the last time he won first up was 2021, and that was in Gosford in May. So you can have Tamer Lane at the eight bucks. Um, I thought Stepati, in his three-year-old year, he was going forward and he was being a bit more on pace. I reckon they might try that from a better draw. Barry six is not the worst. Mm. Yeah, because Dry usually shows a bit of initiative, doesn't he? <laughs> so another will, I think. Um, I think he'll bounce back. Now the wakeful. 
2,000 metres, grew two for the three-year-old Phillies, set weights and penalties. I was not expecting to see Powers of Opal as a 290 favourite here with J-Mac Johnny Sargent. I thought, if she wins, so be it. I'm, I'm going to be taking her on. Mm. She looks a stayer to me. Ocean Park, Philly, out of a uh, a staying a staying type dam. I think a, a dam um, one or placed in a, in a New Zealand Oaks. Yeah, I, I found it interesting coming out of the flight stakes. She she led there. She was like, why are you leading? She's not a leader at all. Um, Johnny Sargent goes, okay, we need a bit of a reset. We need to take this Philly to. Um, to just get a win, which he did in a maiden. Super maiden, though. It's a bit of cash. <laughs> Powers of Opal. Had J-Mac on there. And J-Mac, like, how many of these could he ride if he wanted to? He decides to stick with her because, yeah, 290 is awfully short. I, th- I thought she'd be like six or seven bucks. But but I'm, I'm looking at the rest. And I'm like, how, do I, how am I trying to get her beat? I don't like Treasure the Moment at all. Mm. Um, I thought Jenny's Meadow could... Could um, could win this race, and the other two are uh, Danny O'Brien's Hurry Curry and Inevitable Truth, the other Johnny Sargent horse, and also Shocklets mm. um, by Shocking from Kieran Ma. But I, I'm like, <clears throat> why am I trying so hard to get a beat? Maybe the two ninety, maybe the three bucks is for a good reason, mm. and just just stick with that. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, are you concerned of the mile up to two thousand? No, because she looks she looks to me like like this will be even better for her, mm. and I think her breeding would suggest that it's better. Yep, um, we've backed Johnny Sarge and both of us a few times in this race without much luck. Yep. Um, he hasn't won this race for about ten years, I think. So it's almost like one of those Nelson Mandela effects. I was about to say the yeah. exact same thing. I think there's a Mandela effect with Johnny Sargent with staying fillies. I think they run okay, but he hasn't. I think that that's old news. His strike rate isn't. If a lot of his horses, a lot of his fillies, their strike rate isn't isn't fantastic, and you're like, oh, you just wait for it to get out of it further, and then it's like, well, something else will come along by then. That's just one all the way through anyway. So, yeah. um, I th- look if Harlem Queen out of the Spring Champion stakes was in this race, I'd be all over it like a rash mm-hmm. because I think if you're versing the boys in that race and you're coming to this, you're you're putting them to the sword. But mm-hmm. she's not here, so Powers of Opal is the, is the one that I'm 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 having on top at the moment. Yeah, I think. Again, Jamie Carr, uh, Hurry Curry is the one for me. I'm gonna she give- right on the card. <laughs> Fucking hell. I'm giving her another chance. Uh, look, of the stable mates, what do you take out of this, right? Because Jai's been riding this thing and he's jumped on the stable mate, Inevitable Truth. Now, take that. What I, don't think, I don't think that's the way to look at it. I think... <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think um, it's more of a case of... We know who we'd prefer. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, sorry, it's not the stable, mate. It's um, bloody D- Danny O'Brien. Apologies. Uh, but, um, yeah, Jamie Carr on Hurry Curry. I think she'll run super. I think the key to her is the good track as mm. well. So, And she was only beaten just just over, just under three lengths there in the ethereal at 2,000 metres. So, I think she's going to be rock hard fit with that match fitness. Uh, I can see her improving back to Flemington. Now, Group 1, Coolmore Stud Stakes. 1,200 metres, Group 1 for the three-year-old set weights. What are your thoughts here? Oh, best race of the day, easily. That's my thoughts. Mm. Um, I could pick four or five on top. Yeah. But uh, you have the floor because I know how you're going to Bet in this race? What? Well, I assume that I know that you're gonna how they're gonna bet in this race. The speed map is Gallant Sung, uh, Growing Empire, Racenet have Lady of Camelot going forward. I'm not sure about that, and Yoshi Nobu from uh, the inside barrier as well. I was, I was, I'm not going to say devastated, but I would have loved a, I know barrier eight for Traffic Warden, because Jamie Carr during the week. I don't know if you saw this. She said he's a naughty, horny colt. That's my concern. Naughty, horny, cult. Well, so actually, no, it's not a concern. I love to hear that. <laughs> I love to hear that about Traffic Warden. But I don't, I, I don't want to 
if I'm going to bet on him, it's it's hopefully after the jump because I don't want a repeat of the Everest. But at the same time, if he's relaxed, hmm. well, he he'll start favourite. It's not even the little fillies. I think he's he might be by because it was the. <laughs> um, because it was the ponies that were getting him up about. He oh, really? It. Yeah. I think he was just getting revved up by anything that looked a little bit different. So, <laughs> now he does have Lady of Camelot into his next, uh, into his inside there. But I do see that they put the earmuffs on him pre-race just to kind of try and settle him down a little bit. <laughs> because I think he's just feeling himself a little bit. I also heard a um, an interview with James Cummings. This would have been before the Cox Plate, right? Probably when we were on the plane because I had so much content to download and listen to. <laughs> uh, and there was a horse like neighing its head off behind him. And it was he was like, oh, that's just a traffic warden saying good day to everyone. So I <laughs> think, it, I think he, he feels himself <laughs> big time. So getting back to the race, I've kept this really simple, right? Uh, which is could be to my undoing, but look... I was going to back him in the Everest. This is easier against his own age group. Traffic warden on top. I'd of be me. very upset with you if you didn't. Yeah, very upset with you. Um, because yeah, if you think he's going to win an Everest, then put this lot away. Oh yeah, oh, that, that's that's my logic. The one I am petrified of is Switzerland. Uh, Barrier eight, so J Mac. So you should be. Cornwall Silks. Oh my god. Chef's kiss. <laughs> Uh, he's my on top selection, Switzerland. I just, I would love to be a fly on the wall in those Everest meetings oh. that uh, oh. Chris Waller had with Tom Magnia. And I would not be surprised if Chris said, look, quick back up here, the Everest. I think he can win, but mm. he'll win the Coolmore. Yeah. I, I can just see that. Um, this horse hasn't gone to the well too many times. No. J Mac, Gate 8. Yeah, he's my on top selection, Switzerland. But I'm petrified, <laughs> petrified of Traffic Warden. He's petrified of him. He didn't run on the Everest because he got too worked up, but I can't have him because of that. Yeah. Uh, but I would not be surprised if, no. he's, if he's 50 meters to go. It's just like, see you boys yeah. and Phillies. <laughs> um, I'll catch up with you later, Phillies. And Traffic Warden <laughs> wins this race. Um, I think your Dolphins do a little bit of luck as well. So mm-hmm. um, not that they need it, but uh, yeah, he, I'm petrified of him. Growing Empire, interesting one for me. Mm. I Mark goes back on, and you know, th- this horse and Mark just get along like a house on fire. Mm. Um, this horse is, hasn't finished out of the placings, and Mark hasn't lost on him. Gets gate nine. Mm. I want to see them ride him a bit quieter. Mm-hmm. He's got tactical speed, but I, I want. I would not be surprised if Mock just. Mm. Stays on J Mac because mm-hmm. they've drawn right next to each other, mm. and she goes, "I'm going with you, bruh." Mm. And I would not be surprised if he's ridden quieter and he puts his field to the sword. Growing mm-hmm. Empire, he's run down the straight before, mm-hmm. so he's got that experience. He's by Zoo Star. I feel like every single Zoo Star horse can get down the straight because their old man could. Um, they're the three for me, like comfortably, 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 comfortably. Um, that'll be fighting at the finish. <clears throat> what? What's Lady of Camelot done wrong with this prep? Uh, uh, she was a bit... Market spat her out. They chewed her up, spat her out because she was backed into 380, I think, equal favorite in the Moya. And then she started about 550. That gave me the ick a little bit. And I was big on her that day. She, she hung on for third. She was gritty. The next the next day on the shorts was possibly the worst setup for any horse I've ever seen. That was ridiculous. Like she had 55 and uh, 55 kilos where she was equal weights with I me. Like never, never going to feature there. In the Everest though, she was the, f- um, s- well, second, second girl home after Bella Nipitina and the second three-year-old at home. So at, I think the market has just like, I think it's more SP profile based. Mm. 50 to 1 uh, she was 13 to 1 and then she was hated first up um, where she was fancied early and then they spat her out so I think her price at 950 if you like Lady of Camelot by all means absolutely yeah well just for, for for me it's just for a horse who ran fourth in an Everest who's you know arguably went j- just as good as Growing Empire and, and is triple the price that 
it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Like she's not in my numbers, but mm. I just wanted to point out if you're interested, it makes sense. Um, I now I'm thinking about it a bit more. Traffic warden could just be a big dumb dude, right? And I reckon him drawing the fence or well, near enough, I reckon could be in his favour because when he won at Flemington, he just he drew out. Jamie got him to the fence and he led that field, which we'd never seen before, and he just he put him away easily. Yeah, and now that yeah, field was the victim was on him that day. That field was not this. He was a silly price too, from memory. So I reckon he could just sneak up and not go around another horse and just um, put him away. Now Bellatrix stars the other one. If you're looking for an alternative form lines to that elite crop, um, six hundred and twenty grand in the bank. That'll do. Three on the bounce gives me September run vibes. Mm-hmm. Uh, now September run was exclusively down the straight at Flemington, but this girl's been everywhere. And her most impressive win of the prep uh, was probably last start against the likes of Oscar's Fortune, where she had 51 kilos against some seasoned old sprinters. But she's done it against her own sex as well. Um, yeah, I think she'll run super. I'm not an exotic guy. Um, very rarely am I an exotic guy, but that's your first four, and mm. and I will have that bet on myself. Which one are you having? Are you leaving, putting Electric Star in, or are you having all five? Oh, having all five, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That that to me is just mm. a no brainer. Yeah, or even just box them up in a try. Yeah, and just you know hope for the best. Hope, hope for the best. Hope yeah. growing empire loses. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, shout out to Camp Snowden for bodyguard. Hope he runs really well. Uh, with Huey on, significant booking. Big Dick Hugh is a big booker. Yeah. Now bodyguard will probably actually play his role. Barry too. He'll probably be the one that Traffic Warden's taken taking a seat behind. So tra- uh, Bodyguard has a role to play. This From what you've said, Traffic Warden could be interested in Bodyguard. <laughs> same, that- sort of, same sort of professions. Well, that's why he might run quick after him. He's like, get over here, lad. Uh, now, the Victoria Derby is race 7, 2,500 metre group 1. Fascinating contest. The barrier draw has made this so much more fascinating. Oh, yeah, it has. Because your favourite, El Castello, has drawn... Barrier 18, he'll come into barrier 16 after scratchings of the emergencies, but whew, $3.60 has to be good. He is good, but is he a vintage spring champion winner? I don't know. I'm, I'm keen to take him on. I've left him out of my numbers. Mm. Yeah, hated the gate for him, El Costello. Hated the gate for him. I think he has to go on your numbers and... He'll be in our quaddy, that's for sure. I, I've watched I've watched his last couple of replays, and and he's always had a really favourable position. Mm. But he's also when he's been challenged, mm. he's found again. He's also let me let me counterpoint to that before mm. you elaborate. I think he got challenged by a horse that. Has zero interest in racing. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's so fair. Like, Henlein, well, he's not. He's not here. Exactly. I think that speaks volumes. So Henline came up, looked like he was going to breeze past him, and then he's like, "Nah, am I really doing this still?" Yeah. This is this is my logic when it comes to El Costello. Firm agreement. I th- I think I would have had a bet on in the Red Aces race, the Vars, last weekend. Would he have won it? I, I don't know. Yeah. But I think I would have had a bet on him. <clears throat> El Costello beat him fair and square. So I think, in my mind, by that logic, he's number one seed for me, and he, he's a disgusting price, though. <laughs> um, I don't I don't know if I like the Vars form this year. I, I agree with you, and I'm going yeah. with a form reference that I typically think is complete and utter dog shit for the Derby each year. I'm going with the Geelong Classic this year. Yeah. I think of Saint the, a million. Uh, yeah, I think the lead ups um, for the Derby. I think it's been the most truly run, and 2200 meters. I think you need a bit more match fitness heading towards this. Yeah, I, I agree with you. He's he's the one I found as well um, at double figures. Saint a million. Um, so he's definitely in my numbers. I. I know I've got a ticket for him, and it's less than his price now. <laughs> uh, number thirteen, scary. Mm. He's he's just been in these fastly run races, mm. and you mentioned Johnny get angry, which I think was incredibly well found because he 
we were, we were laughing about him the entire prep, and he was running well at big prices, and he ended up running in this race at 50s because he wasn't the he never had the flashing light but we just heard about him was like he's just a grinder bro mm. needs further mm. it turns out he did because he won the fucking derby and we <laughs> didn't have a cent on at an enormous <laughs> price um scary gives me those sort of vibes like if mm. this is a truly run 2500 meter look it could be fastly run who who knows right mm. but if it is i know for a fact he'll see out the distance because he just gives me those those vibes mm. scary so i've got him in my numbers as well um, and I do think Red Ace is like, even though I, I don't really like the form that much, like he's got more under the tank for me and, and this mm. has always been the grand final. So that, that, they're my four. Am I awfully confident at El Costello? He, he's my top selection at $3.60. Absolutely not. Mm. But but if he drew gate nine, would I be confident? Probably. So mm. I can't be that spooked. Yep. I've This is going on my profile, guaranteed. So Saint Emilion at fourteen to one, I think I've just rewatched his last few runs. Sixteen hundred meters at Goulburn and then twenty two hundred meters. <laughs> where'd at, you where'd you find that? <laughs> uh at uh Geelong. He's just like he's got panels on what he's versing. Uh but the like that Goulburn race, like there was another win out of it as well. I think the key to him is a good good ground because he he was absolute had nothing in a super maiden at Kembla on a heavy eight. So I think the good ground is definitely going to suit him. Look, he is a schnitzel colt, but uh, his I had a look into it. His dam uh, placed in a South Australian Oaks, so I think there's some sort of staying pedigree there um, in his bloodlines. If you look really deep, so I'm happy to side with him barrier six tc i think he'll be you know third pair back and i think he's just got an explosive turn of foot which isn't necessarily the best recipe for a derby but i think at that price i'm happy to find out well if all the lead-up races to the derby have been fastly run who's to say that this will be anything different and what do you need at an end of a slow race to win you need a turn of foot yeah so i think um the Geelong Classic, in my view, is probably one of the better form references heading to this year's derby. So I'm happy to take him. Uh, King of Thunder, I think, on the quick backup is probably the one I want to take out of the bars. Um, so he was hitting the line extremely nicely. I think 2,500 meters is only going to suit him as well. J-Mac from Barry 1 will put him to sleep. I think he'll, he'll be hitting the line super. King of Wall Street for Matty Kumani. I would love this horse to win. Matty Kumani is so such an underrated trainer of stayers, and he's still yet to get his Group One win. I think this horse will run super. He's only a slight, tiny little thing, but he's a little pocket rocket with us, um, and he just loves getting out in distance. I feel. I feel like he's going to run super. And then I think um, of the rest, Red Aces from Barry Four. Jamie Mott would always love to see him win. Yep, the tallest jockey in Australia. <laughs> All right. The Empire Rose. Doesn't get much easier. Uh, <laughs> but look, your boy's got a pretty decent record in this race. Mm. Doesn't mean I'm going to pick the winner this year, though. Fuck knows. It's, like you said, did you find pride at Jenny last year? Oh. Was it shout the, shout the Bar the year before? No, it was Ice Bath. Was that two years ago? Was that two years ago? Must have been. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Then before that, it would have been Shout the Bar. And then... Melody? No, Colette was there somewhere. Colette, yeah, Melody, uh, Shoals, so it's Shillelagh. Been, it's been a... You've had an early run, but you've had a run of outs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Forget I said that. God. You're going to pick the winner this year. Thanks. Thanks, mate. I reckon you're going to pick Zardozzi. What is she doing here? <laughs> Caulfield Cup down to this. Uh, surely she won't run. No, she will. James Cummings came out and said, yeah, she's going to run the Empire Rose and then we're going to run her in the Melbourne Cup. What? Uh, so this for me is just a track gallop. It has, has to be. So I Daniel Stackhouse is riding with due yeah, respect. So I couldn't, I couldn't possibly. But, <laughs> but also like... V. Sestina did four laps of the valley and then came out and brained him at a Cox Plate. So Zardozzi coming back from a Caulfield Cup where you had to be a leader that day. Mm. Um, you know, 
Maybe she'll run super, but yeah, I'm just going to let her through to the keeper. There, there doesn't look to be a lot of speed in this race, mate. No. Nah. At all. And there's a horse that um, has been flying under the radar a little bit, this prep, who has been leading all the way and, and running some pretty good time. Um, and that's number 11, Grin Zinger Bell at 14s. Gets, gets a simple lead here with D D-Lane, D-Lane on. Mm. Uh, and she's done it on she's done it on good, she's done it on heavy. Form around Al Safina and Lady Jones, which is good form. Mm. Like, is this lot a cut above? Yeah, probably, but she's 14 bucks. So she could just have one of those Prada Jenny like races. Mm. She's not Prada Jenny, but where she just leads and nothing can run it down. Mm-hmm. Um, a tissue's obviously got a phenomenal record. Um, in this race, and I like the setup 2,000 meters from the Denial Knowledge race and the Might and Power, which is the A1 form heading into this race. And, um, you know, she could just be scooting home like a freight train. I think this is Amelia's Jewels time, though. Going back the anti clockwise way of racing, uh, I thought she was good um, in the, the King Charles. I like that she's staying at a mile. You found Jamie Carr for the first half of the field. I'm not saying I'm finding her any, you know, for the second half, but yeah, I think this is the race for Millie. This has always been the grand final, and um, yeah, she's probably going to be my top selection in Millie's Jewel. Mm. But I think Renzinger Bell's the one at, at a big price mm-hmm. for me. Well, if you checked my Ned's profile, let me actually check it. Because and gamble responsibly, you can't get on this anymore. Uh, at the at the price I put it out on, because it was simply, actually, let me wait till the last, because there is one in the last that I've chucked in there. I thought this was a race for Kaimochi. You might, you might hate the stable, but. And you might not think that a Silver Eagle at 1,300 metres is an ideal preparation run for at the mile, but this girl no, doesn't know how to run a bad race. I think she's absolutely flying. She looked outstanding in the yard at Manicado night. She was three wide that night, and she was the first mare home. Uh, similar in the Silver Eagle, she was on speed, and she, she, didn't, she only got cover really late. She was the first mare home there as well. I, th- I just, barrier, barrier one with Huey on, I think she's just going to be ridden positively behind the speed. She's going to pop out and I think she'll just grind him down. I, th- I cannot see how she runs a poor race, Kamachi. And she was $17 earlier in the week. I think it's because she is a four-year-old mare, but I think Yulong have stepped in and gone, hey, brah, forget about the Golden Eagle. Let's get her some black type. So I think this is the group one that, is really winnable for her. She does need to step up, but I think she's been racing as well as she could be to be featuring here. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other ones, a tissue, Millie's Jewel, as you kind of mentioned. Millie's Jewel has raced 15 times on her Melbourne leg, won nine times, ran second four times, missed out the placings twice. Uh, good track is obviously the key to her. She's sound, found some, they're soft fives, but... I think just dull, she, dulls are brilliant. Yeah, bit. I think good uh, good three by this stage will suit her down to the ground. Orchestral we have not talked about seven dollars. Blinkers first time to try and sharpen her up. She's missed the start the last two starts. This prep, she's she's for mine a, a horse who needs to be out over further. Do you think it's telling that J Max not taking the ride? Absolutely, it is. Mm. Absolutely, it is. Uh, I. She, I find it mind-boggling that this is she's she's running in in races at this distance against her own sex, yeah. But I, she looked to have elite staying talent to me, and I know she didn't win the um, the Australian Oaks, but she was up for an awfully long time. Mm. Like that was after a Derby win. Mm. Not a lot of fillies can beat the boys in a Derby. No. So I think um, they've gone to the well a bit too much with this with this filly. What do I know about training? <laughs> uh so, yeah, in, interesting. And, and it could be just a little bit of that four-year-old mare syndrome for me. Mm. Plenty of ammo on the quick backup. Barrier three helps her significantly. It does. And, you know, third up here, uh, plenty of ammo. I, I, I looked at her a little bit. Um, 
I'm going to risk her because she's a six-year-old mare who has only had seven starts. Inferior form one. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought Alcefina would run well. Barry six, Shinon as well. It's a very deep race. It is, yeah, it is. Struggling, Rev- struggling to find a first four, but you got yeah. to. Yeah, Revolutionary Miss will be super, but my first four is Komachi on top from Alcefina, a tissue at Millie's Jewel. Mm. Yeah, Millie, Millie the filly on top for me. Grinzinger Bell will run well, uh, tissue. And um, I think Lady Lady in Pink is another good roughie that I'd like to include. Mate, you're well within your means too. Yeah. Well within your means. Now, the Furfy Sprint. We have had some success in this race. For, forever, really. <laughs> Since the dawn of time. I think we get it every single year. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, 1,100 metres, group three for the Mares. Set weights and penalties. Now, I thought there was a few horses in this race that were clear bets. But I want to start with Ferrari. $6.50 coming from benchmark 78 form in Sydney where she knocked over Tristate who is races exclusively in that grade and wins once a year. Beat it by less than half a length. Is she just like... Is she overrated? Like, this is a group three in a pretty deep field. Like, there's 18, 19 runners in it. I'm very keen to take her on. I didn't... She not in my numbers. Yeah. Not that we're doing a first four for this race. But uh, <laughs> I didn't give her much consideration, no. And she was a good friend of mine last start. But, yeah, you're right. In different gravy and, and going down the straight for the... F- First time, I believe. No, she's and, been down the straight once before, and she got knocked up that day. She she, she was a dollar eighty drifting out to two twenty, where right to party knocked her off. So, yeah, need to need to see her do it in this grade because they've kind of avoided the tough lead up runs and gone to benchmark seventy eights in the last at in Sydney, which are just absolute dross races. It's absolute lottery. There's two horses here who've got a significant jockey upgrade. Number five, a little deep. Number 17, Ismis. Five a little deep. John McNeil, see you later, mate. Uh, Jamie Carr jumps on. Ismis, Blake Shin jumps on for Jai McNeil. Uh, Ismis last start. Mm. Probably wanted to see her um, a little bit better, but after the fact, she was lame. And she had one of the biggest nudges in the ribs would have taken every inch of air out of her yeah so big forgive at 11 bucks a little deep i've been on nearly every start this prep uh for a couple wins um i think actually sorry the one time i wasn't on her was when i backed arkansas kid like an idiot (laughs) um beat him backed her the two starts since lost to kundalini and aviatrix aviatrix would have beaten a lot of horses that day uh and kundalini um was smart and find it here at 15 bucks um, and she comes out of that same race with Aviatrice. So I think that's some good form. They're the two I'm sort of leaning towards. Isthmus $11, prepared to forgive particularly because I like her a lot mm. um, and I don't think I've found Blake Shin at all all day. Mm. So I can find him in the last. Yeah. So That's how I'm looking at the race. This is what I put on my Ned's profile, right? And I think there was a handful of drifters that followed me in. It's a, don't have the odds here, but it was paying plenty. It was a a system, uh, two, three, four. A Richo special. Yep. St. Emilion at 12 to 1. I think he's at 14s now. It's all right. It evens out. Uh, Kaimochi at 17s. So she's into 11s, maybe. Another Will at 360 into 270. Uh, Spacewalk at $17. He was not that price, was he? No, it was like nines. And it's been at nines. She's 11s now. So, like, uh, summary of that story is... Fortune. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Uh, so, it's Miss. I want to forgive her big time. I think the other thing which you... I don't think you just talked about. I don't think the soft seven was to her liking either. No. Well, what did I say in... What did the victim say in his notes? If she's anything like her mother... Mm. She won't want us off track. And it proved to be true. I should just (laughs) back my gut. Now, I think uh, another mare who is in sensational form 
is number three, Sans Dute. Mm-hmm. J-Mac for Team Kiwi. Uh, I think she is going to run super. Has to go in the quadrilla. <laughs> Has to. Has to go in the quadrilla. Like, I think, uh, yeah, her last three runs have been uh, on soft or heavy ground. And you look at her Flemington record, it'd be untouchable for some of these. She absolutely smokes it when she goes down there. Uh, yeah, Sands Dude and Itzmiss are the ones on top for me. Uh, yeah, there was keen to take on Ferrari, t- keen to take on Wanda Rocks, who's bringing some Brisbane form uh-huh. uh, over a thousand meters. I think she's not quite good enough. So nice deep race, but I'm keen to get into it. All right, so that is Flemington done and dusted. In 56 minutes, I'll take that. That's not too bad. I reckon we'll spend 10 minutes at Rose Hill. The Russell Boulding, otherwise known as the Think About It Stakes, uh, 1,300 metres, set weights and penalties. Bella Nips is 270, uh, Barry 4. Um, you know, weather is looking like it will be a good track here as well. So she's good on a good track, but probably not as effective. She's only won four times from 32 starts. She's also not been... Bella Nips as we know it at right now in those 32 starts. But I'm keen to take her on at the price. I thought Sunshine in Paris and King of Sparta were the ones. King of Sparta was very good in the Sydney Stakes. Any strong thoughts? Uh, I was leaning towards having Sunshine in Paris on top. Um, like, yeah, she finished fifth in the Everest, but I think that was only like a length and a bit um, into fifth. So it was close enough. Yeah, so she was one for me. I thought Lady Laguna as well could find some form in this race of 14s. Um, it's coming at, coming from an eight-week break first up uh, in the Sydney Stakes, 1,200 metres on a soft five. Um, I think started from a wide gate there as well. So, yeah, 1,300 metres, that's up her alley, Lady Laguna. So they're probably the two for me. Yep, love it. Now the Golden Eagle, cracking edition of the race, 1,500 for the four-year-old set weights. Say what we've said plenty about this race, but uh, it doesn't take away from the quality of it. Now, do you want me to give some summaries of these well-fancied international runners? Yeah. Ascoli Pacino, Group 1 winner over 1,600 metres in the Juvenile Phillies Group 1 and second in the 1,000 guineas over the mile at Group 1 level as well. Uh, and she also took out a Group 3 uh, against the older horses over the mile, I believe. Outstanding form. Um, Liberty Island, who was actually a seventy favourite in the Tenno show on the weekend, actually won the Juvenile Phillies Group 1 in 2022. And Sadashi, the white filly, she won it uh, the year before that. Yep. So, so world, world-class format. Yep. Um, so she ran second in the 1,000 guineas. Uh, other previous winners include... Uh, Liberty Liberty Island Sadashi and Armand Die has won that as well, which is pretty wild. So, absolute world class form. Oban Burumai was a Group Two winner over fourteen hundred meters and a Group Three winner over sixteen hundred and Group One placed before coming over. So her form is better than Oban Burumai who won it last year. Her starting price profile was four bucks in the juvenile fillies and then two bucks in the thousand guineas. So she's very, very, very good. Likely to be off the pace. Barry 6 to 17, you know, it is what it is. Now, Lazart, this is... I, I usually pen uh, the Europeans at this distance, um, more sprinting types, but this this horse could be the exception. He is an absolute winning machine. Last four races have been from listed to Group 1 level, uh, from 1,300 to 1,500 metres on good tr- good and heavy tracks. He handles all ground. The latest was against the older horses at Group 1 level. Um, it was the... Oh, enjoy this pronunciation. The Ar- Arc de Maurice de Geest. <laughs> Arc de Maurice de Geest. Previous winners include Moonlight Cloud, who was a th- who won the race three times and nearly knocked off Black Caviar. Now she tore two muscles in the race, but we don't need to go over <laughs> over that. There's only one horse who's <laughs> rated higher in Australia. 
Then V is Sistina did yeah. on the weekend and the Cox played according to Dan O'Sullivan yeah. and that's Black Caviar with 117 on the reg, bro. Yeah, so he's only seen the good ground uh, or the last time, sorry, the only time he's seen good ground because it was always bloody raining in France was the, his latest at group one level and he brained that field by four lengths. Mm-hmm. Like, he was doing his best work late. Uh, he's unbeaten in his career Boasting winning margins of three and a half lengths, six lengths, four and a half lengths, two and a half, and four from his six career starts. He's very good. I think he goes forward and kind of like bullies these um, from barrier eight, so uh, barrier 12 rather. So I think he's a sensational winning chance. I think they both are. Mm-hmm. So your team internationals, or and there's other internationals in the race, but these two will be the first ones home. Uh, yes, I'm Team Internationals. You love the Japanese, mate, and they, and there's a reason why because they're the horses themselves are of the highest quality. Mm. Their preparation is of the highest quality. We saw, we saw mm. firsthand. Prognosis looked a million bucks, and he would have won that race. In a lot of years, I think. I think uh, here in Dan O'Sullivan, I think he runs second to Liga Assure, but he wins all the others. Yeah. <laughs> so, unbelievable. And Obam, you and I won this race last year. Liga Assure, we mm. saw that. Warp speed, ran in the Caulfield Cup, but, you know, soft track. Plus, we're looking at we're looking at middle distance thing. Middle distance for the Japanese horse. You think they're the best in the world. Mm. Okay, if that's the case then, and if, they're, if the Japanese are saying, yeah, she's probably our best miler, she puts this lot to the sword, doesn't she? Ascoli yeah. Pacino? Yeah. I think that I'm a little bit spooked by the barrier. I'm not going to lie to you. Because Rose Hill getting that far back, like, I, I honestly think she'll be last. I think they, they're I'm not saying arrogant. I think they just think she is so much better, which she is. I think she might get too far back on Rose Hill, where it's going to be a good three track, which is, again, to her liking. It's going to be really tough for her to make up the ground. Oh, yeah, I think so. But she's got the right jockey on. She's got the magic man on. Like, she's $4.40 with Neds at the moment. What price would she be if she drew seven, not not 17? Oh, mate, she'd be two fifty. Okay, so that's a $2 price discrepancy. I'll take it. Mm. Easily, easily on top. Uh, I think she's just so much better. Um, And we could just be like, oh, okay. I think for me, in a race like this, sometimes you can, you can, she can find herself, you know, in the back half of the field, yeah, but with cover, and sometimes Rose Hill plays so fair that every horse has their chance. And I think in a race that's worth this much money, I know last year's was a bit of a walk, but it wasn't the quality of this race is. Um, if it turns into a sit and sprint, if it's a truly on race, she's the one I want to be on quite comfortably. Um, yeah, Lazat. Bruh, like he's <laughs> serious form too. And uh, I read I read an article about him somewhere this week and they're like, bro, if this horse had nuts, he wouldn't be here. <laughs> Bro's just trying to pick up some cash, which is what you do with a gelding. That's the beauty of him. Yep. Um, so Lazat, yeah, absolutely a winning chance. Um, and then outside of that, like I'm a big Jolly Star guy, absolutely. I think she can run super here. She, she rattled home in the Everest. To, and, and I sort of look at that race and so I'm like, Okay, so they wanted to keep it fresh for that, and she did rattle home. Um, from gate 11, where's she going to be, especially with someone like Karen McAvoy on? And is she going to out-sprint the Japanese horse? Maybe, I don't know. But I think she'll be in front of the Japanese horse. Mm. So Jolly Star, yeah, absolutely. She's five bucks. Mm. Steffi Magnetica, 10 bucks, Stradbroke winner. Forgive her Everest run. She can run well. Like... This is so deep. I think Kitty Cat Tom can run well. Southport mm. Tycoon and Elevens can run well. Uh, Straka, who's been a winning machine, he's twenty to one. I'm, I'm convinced that there's a a big race in Skybird. She's forty one to one. So that the, the chances don't end there. But I'm I'm confident that the Japanese mm. has the class to to win this race. And and yeah, yeah the gates the gates shit. But like mm. I'll find out at that price for a horse that's starting two dollars in Group Threes in Japan. Mm. Plus, uh, I'm. Honestly, a coin flip between her and Lazard. Like, um, I think I'm leaning towards Lazard from the barrier. That's the only thing. Mm. And still, he's been drawn barrier 12. It's not an outstanding barrier. No. Like, he still has to do some work. Uh, but I think his wins have just been so impressive and so of hers, but they've been a bit bit tighter. So, I've got Lazard on top from Scully Pacino, Jolly Star, best of the locals, and War Machine, 
at any course. old odds. He was 70 to 1 after the barrier draw from barrier 7, Jay Ford for Team Moroni. Now, he was third in the goal, uh, in the Silver Eagle, rather, but before that, he was getting knocked off as a $2.50 favorite against Barrakeel. But we've seen what Barrakeel's done. Now, you might say, hey, that's a benchmark 84. Barrakeel is a Group 1 class horse, in my opinion. So I think War Machine is a sneaky good horse. Yep, Ascoli Pacino on top for me. By Lazat. Um, yeah, Jolly Star's got to be in the numbers for me. And um, yeah, at odds, I'm just convinced Skybird's got a big race in her. Mm-hmm. And that big race for her could be a fourth and a Golden Eagle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, mate. I, I understand that. Mm. And then she'll come out in a Empire Rose next year. Um, now, the Rose Hill Gold Cup, not the best way to finish, but you know. We have to finish with something. It is what it is. Uh, a couple of internationals here. Relentless Voyager and how do you pronounce the one down the bottom? Where is it? Uh, do you accept? Aquarius? No. Uh, Saga, Saganiti um, as well. The French horse. Uh, so I will start with Saganati. So... Group 3 placed in France over 2,400 metres. Um, they have some of the best stayers on the planet. So I think he's going to be targeted at our middle distance races. He's a still great cult. So you'll like the look of him. Um, but uh, Relentless Voyager, they were aiming up at a Melbourne Cup before he was denied by the vets. First up at 2,000 metres, he could. I think he could have enough speed in his legs for this, but... Um, I feel like I need to do a bit more form on him and we know the level of the rest of these. So I'm kind of, I, I, I'm kind of leaning towards one of those two, probably the grey, Saganati. I don't, have a, I don't have a strong opinion on this race at all, mate. Um, yeah, I think I think the, the international form is, is no doubt probably going to be better. Um, I thought Madatsu was a pretty big price at 15s. Yeah, I think he... The thing that is not in his favour, so a horse like Akira Rias, who has done not much in Australia, but I think he gets a pretty severe weight advantage on that horse. Means him six and a half kilos better at the weights. Mm. So uh, Madatsu is still at 53. is awfully still better play. Oh, he's okay place, but um, he just mixes his form a little bit. And mm. this is his toughest test, I feel. Mm. Faulkner Park's starting to get to a price. Mm. If he gets out to double figures, he might be a bet. But well, he was only beaten one just over length. So. And like I said, on the review podcast, um, he looks to be a horse who will just get better into his prep. So maybe maybe this run then needs another one. But And Sydney. Sydney legs big for yep. him. Yep. So 60 kilos, but I think he's good enough. If non-conformist wins, I will throw up. <laughs> um, and that's all she wrote. Big day, big day. Huge day. Work to do. 70 minutes of the best. Mm. I think that's fair enough for... Absolutely. Like today. 100%. Mm. What's the highlight for you? Cool more stud. It's a good addition, isn't it's it? It's a fantastic addition. Wouldn't be surprised by any of those five horses that mm. I outlined winning the race. Outside of that, I'd be shocked. Yeah. That's And that's why you play exotic, brah. Five in the quaddy. No more. I'm thinking we might have... And don't put my foot down often, but I might put my foot down. Two quaddies. Skinny fat. Yeah. Yes, mate. Skinny fat might put my yeah, foot yeah. down. Yep. Well, Not in Sydney. Just in Melbourne. We have we have the kitty to play with. Let's do put we, it that way. Do we ever? I reckon whoever's dealing caravan side of the casino on Saturday night will be shaking in their boots. <laughs> shaking. Let me... Kitty. One, two... <laughs> How many? Uh, all right. Best of luck if you're having a bet this weekend. Uh, get your tips in for the Group 1 tipping comp. I think it is a very easy week for you to get some ground back at double figures. Not easy, obviously, because you have to find them. But, uh, yeah. Wouldn't be surprised if every single winner of the Group 1s is at double figures. So let's yes. put it that way. Best of luck. Uh, if you're having a bet, do it with Neds. Thanks for listening. See you later. Good luck, Drifters.